Lauren Cooper, and today we welcome Mr. Hussein Kabani, or should I say, Mr. Get Kabani Gets Old. That's awesome, man. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for doing this. I really appreciate you taking the time. No problem, man. It's my pleasure. I'd love to. All right. So tell everybody a little bit about uh, where you're working and where your business is at. Uh, just a quick little overview. Yeah. So uh, in short, uh, basically, I'm working in Pickering, Ontario. It's just a little bit east of Toronto. Um, that is my focus market. So it's like Pickering, Ajax, but I am primarily still just focusing on a little area uh, in Pickering. Um, business right now where it's at, uh, you know, I, last year is the year I started building a team. Um, it's been challenging, but uh, that's kind of where I'm at. I've got uh, two, two other agents with me and a full-time admin person right now. So last year was a year that we implemented a lot more structural things, but uh, yeah, that's, that's where we're at right now. How long have you been in the business? So I got licensed in uh, 2011, uh, September 2011, and uh, I did it kind of part time for a year. I have a little bit of a similar story to you, actually, um, whereas I was working corporately and at the end of 2010 and beginning of 2011, I had this feeling that things are not going to work out corporately because we were going through a lot of mergers and acquisitions mm -hmm. and we ended up getting bought out by a larger corporation. And I didn't think this is going to be my role was not going to exist after this point. So beginning of 2011, I remember flying to Wisconsin for a business meeting and I was just like hammering through the books. Uh, so September 2011. I got licensed and almost to the day a year later uh, my position was eliminated okay so good thing you were prepared yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's go back to uh, the beginning what got you yeah. into real estate to even to consider getting your license in the first place yeah I, I think there's a uh, really two factors uh, one factor was is that my parents never really bought real estate and they used to go around with a lot of real estate agents and I thought it was a pretty cool gig. Uh, they would show up in nice cars, dress very well, and I thought it was easy gig. You know, you open doors and sell houses and make a ton of money. So that was one of the things. The other thing I realized was since my parents didn't own real estate, we actually lived in nonprofit housing. And um, I realized that I think at a younger age, I would say 16, 17, that to actually get ahead, uh, real estate was the way to go. Um, so it kind of evolved from like trying to buy real estate to like, you know, regaining interest into being involved with real estate. So what, what is your educational or work background before you got into real estate? Yeah. So, so to be uh, quite upfront, like uh, I didn't complete high school. Um, I actually got kicked out of high school. Uh, <laughs> I went to college for a semester and a bit. Uh, it just wasn't for me. Um, so uh, I ended up working like warehouse labor jobs. I ended up at one company where I was able to kind of uh, work my way up. So I went there as a temporary worker. I unloaded containers by hand uh, and slowly moved up the chain. So instead of going through all the details, I ended up, uh, I would say in three and a half years or so, four years maybe, uh, running their sales operations um, for about, uh, you know, I, I think we were around like a hundred million dollar company at that time. So I was running uh, like their logistics, um, supply chain, uh, sales forecasting, um, and they're met helping them manage their warehouse. Oh, that's really interesting. So you started kind of manual labor, worked your way into sales. And yeah. And that kind of morphed into real estate. So you saw some sort of opportunity in real estate, got your license at yeah. a good time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, exactly. uh, and then got in. So, okay. Tell me about your first year part time in real estate. Uh, were you working? Were you doing anything with it? Or were you just sort of hanging on to it just in case? Yeah, I, I was actually trying to uh, launch and do uh, things with it. Like my first transaction was actually my own. I listed my own condo because I had purchased the home in Pickering. So I was living at Young and Shepherd. So I actually listed my condo. That was my first transaction. Um, that was also my push to try to get the license in time so I can list my own condo first. So that's what I did. Um, and then I did start to hit up my sphere of influence, friends, family kind of thing. Uh, I got a couple of uh, things out of there, nothing really significant. But I really started playing around with uh, Kijiji and Craigslist. Uh, I started writing up like, I would say like a little bit more creative ads instead of just throwing things out there. So with my brokerage's listings, um, I was with Home Life at the time. Uh, I would actually borrow their listings and I would uh, put, put out ads on Kijiji and Craigslist of areas that I kind of wanted to work like Scarborough Pickering if they had listings there. But I would not just put up the house. I would actually put up a little bit of a write up and say, hey, like you can actually buy this house with this much money down payment. This would be your mortgage. And if everything kind of continues the way on average, this is how much you would appreciate. So I did a little bit more legwork to get like almost first time home buyers more enticed. So I was actually able to complete a bunch of transactions doing that. 
Oh, fantastic. So yeah. a lot of people try that route and give up because they get a lot of garbage, so to speak, yeah. leads and, and deal with sure. people that really um, aren't qualified. So you stuck with it and you had some success. So that's yeah. great. Yeah. Worked out. Okay. So that's your first year. Now uh, you're going full-time into real estate. Talk about yeah. that transition. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, it was so it was like meant to be almost i would say like the day after uh, my position was eliminated i was sitting at home i had opportunity to go back and work at other corporations um but uh, my phone rang and it was one of my friends uh, and he's like hey my parents need to sell their house in pickering can you do it i was like yeah okay sure <laughs> i have no, no idea I might be a little busy. like <laughs> like i don't have a sign i don't have anything i was like sure i could i could do this um, so yeah, so, so I just started doing it. Um, and lucky for me, I actually moved into Pickering into an area that was a new subdivision and, um, I already started to kind of farm it. Um, I was actually printing out stuff on cardstock and I did it in a creative way where I made it really targeted to them. I was getting stuff at my door that basically had like a generic marketing thing on it says that has a person's picture on it and it says, Hey, listen, buy with me or whatever. And I said, ah, this is there's no information in this. So what I did was, and I knew people were curious because it was a new area. So on a monthly basis, I started taking the stats uh, and split it up by like the type of home it was. And I started publishing that. I had no budget. So uh, what I did was I got stock paper. And what I did was I had a printer and I ran it through stock paper and I cut the things myself. Uh, and I delivered them by hand uh, to the neighborhood. And I actually ended up doing that for a long time. Uh, I think eight months. And then I started getting business off of that. Fantastic. So you're yeah. basically putting it on um, the, the stats. So townhouses, detached, semi-detached, yeah. what's happened that month for sale, yeah. sold and all that. And exactly. On the back or underneath, you've got your information. Contact me if you have any yeah. questions or, or what. Yeah. So so basically on the front, so it's a half a page on the front. I would have a very easy to read like a Excel chart with like three lines on it. You know, townhouse, single car detached, double car detached, last average three months, uh, you know, what has sold. Uh, how much, how many days on market. And on that same line, I would have like, this is what's available right now in the average price point, the number of units and average price point. And at the very bottom, like I made my branding not too big because I really wanted to show that I am like stats and information driven. I had branding at the bottom of it, but it wasn't huge. And even at the back, um, I used to write out like a commentary, like almost my perspective of where these things are, what went wrong. And, you know, sometimes if I felt like something sold less, I'd be like, yeah, you know, the average price is times lower because I feel like, you know, this one should have sold for a little bit more money or something else like that. So uh, I, I use both sides of the flyer. Fantastic. And how many homes were you delivering to? So it started off small because it was a new subdivision. Um, I started off with about 150. Um, at this point right now, it's grown to about 1,800. Well, that's taken a couple of years to get to, right? Yeah. Okay. So how did you scale that? Uh, did you have a specific goal in mind as to how you were doing it? Yeah, so my goal was always like, because I have a little bit of sales and marketing background from uh, my corporation uh, experience. So um, I was really going to be a lot more specific to where I wanted to be. And I never really came out of that area. So in instead of like kind of like going wide, I actually went very small. So I consistently hit that area. And that was my goal to be the, the dominant player in that area. Fantastic. So you kind of picked a, a small niche market and went deep yeah. rather than wide. Exactly. Okay, great. Now, what kind of return were you seeing on that? So at first you were doing 150 homes on a monthly basis. Do yes. you remember uh, your first year, um, how many listings or buyers you got out of that? Probably um, in the first year, I would say maybe about seven or eight. So it was pretty decent out That's of the first huge. year, I would say. Yeah. That's a huge yeah. return. The, the, the key to it also was is that like I know like and, and from what I realized now after doing that I didn't know what I was doing but afterwards I found out that there's a lot of turn in new subdivision so I kind of like fluked out and got lucky and I just stuck with it and the area was so new that there was no dominant player so I was the guy. That's fantastic. All right. Yeah. Great. So uh, other than the, the geo farming um, thing that you were doing what else were you concentrating on to try to pull in business at that time? Um, it was really just kind of keeping in touch with my database. Like, um, by no means have I been really good at doing it. I'm still trying to improve it, but it was really keeping in touch with uh, my clientele. Uh, quite honestly, I didn't do anything else. Like, my farm was uh, something that got me a lot of business, and, and it built up my business, and it built up, uh, you know, people that were using me, and I got referrals off of them for their family and friends as well. Oh, great. So now, was there a method that you had or a strategy that you implemented in order to get those referrals or was it just a natural progression? 
For me, I think it was natural because, uh, like, I feel like with my personality, I kind of come across like that. Like, I'm not pushy. Um, I'm, I'll tell you the truth right off the bat. Like, if I don't like a house or I'm very opinionated in that way, too, like, I'll tell you, like, oh, wow, that I wouldn't do that. Um, so, so I think that they get that trust factor and, and they buy into what I'm kind of doing. And I'm not pushy at all. So I think that it was easy to work with me. OK, that that's yeah. key. Obviously, you want to develop that relationship and make it uh, yeah. about their outcome rather than the dollars that you might get exactly. in that situation. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Now that was kind of what year one, year two. Yeah. Um, for me, like I said, like the farm actually did play out a lot longer. Um, and from there, like the amount of transactions I was able to do. So say like I've been working in that area since like 2012, it's 2019 now. So, you know, in six years over there, like I was very fortunate that I did like over a hundred transactions in, in that area. So, from there, like my business really did grow. Um, the turns are a lot slower there right now, um, but still based on what I was able to do there and kind of build the database, most of my business still, like even last year, I would say 70% of it comes from referral basis. Excellent, wow. Yeah. So when you were delivering these flyers, were you knocking yeah. on any doors or making any calls to supplement that or was it just a passive way of doing it? It was just a passive way of doing it. Uh, and that's why I took, I think if I did knock on more doors or if I did knock on doors and I called around, uh, I think I would have actually done better. I think for me personally, part of my problem was is that I didn't join the right brokerage right from the beginning, uh, only because of the costs associated with it. Uh, Cause you know, I was going in part time, money was tight at the time as well. Um, I probably wasn't at the right brokerage, but once I slipped over to a Remax brokerage, I got introduced to a whole bunch of different things like, like real estate coaching. I didn't know anything about that when I first started. So I didn't know that there was a method to this thing. Yeah. Everyone was just sort of yeah. throwing stuff at the wall and see what yeah, was going to go on. What sticks. Yeah. <laughs> so when did you make that transition? Working, you know what I mean? Like I just kind of waited right. for the phone to ring at that point. A lot of people still do, so yeah. well, <laughs> that's one way of doing it. Great for them. <laughs> um, when did you make that transition over? I think uh, I made the transition. So I was licensed with the uh, Home Life Office from like 2000 when I got my license in September 2011, and it was May. I believe it was May 2014 that I made that transition. Okay. So I stuck it out a little while longer with them. I think my breaking point with uh, moving away from home life was, and, and I got the indication early on, but I just wasn't comfortable because business was coming in still, even though what it was, it was still coming in and it was good numbers for what I was doing, not kind of knowing what I was doing. And um, I was invested in marketing a lot. Like I had flyers and stuff like that. So it was a hard transition to make, but um I, I think the key was there uh, maybe a year and a half into it because out of uh, like say the Scarborough office, which was the closest one to Pickering, I think in a year and a half they were like, oh, you're like the number one agent out of this office. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> like I did part time for a year and this is six months of me doing it full time. If I'm number one, I think there's a problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how did everything progress? So let, let's talk about that geo farming strategy. Are you still yeah. using that strategy today? Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. Yeah. It's just I, expanded. Like, yeah, exactly. So, so the area was like really, really brand new. And again, like I, I ended up in an area that was really growing and is continuing to grow. Like there is plans right now to still build like over 10,000 residential units there. Wow. Yeah. So I, I got a good foothold in there right, right from the beginning. Now have, as the, the years have progressed, have you started supplementing with other uh, methods of getting business? Yeah, absolutely. So, so another thing that I'm big into, and and I know that it's um, it's iffy, um, but I'll but I'll just put it out there. <laughs> so, so, so the thing is, is that like I I I'm big about branding, um, really big about branding. So, likely if you drive through Pickering, you're gonna end up seeing a transit shelter, bus bench, something like that with my face and name on it. Um, I got quite a few of them out there right now. So what I'm really doing is I'm actually going after like brand recognition, uh, household name type of thing. So that's another thing. So I get a lot of calls and saying, oh, like I've seen your stuff everywhere. Um, it works and it doesn't work. Like the amount of investment that is required to do something like that. I don't think that would be for somebody that's just, you know, starting off a business. But for me, the way I look at it, I'm going to be around like my brand is going to be around in 15, 20 years. So this is a more of a branding play for me, but it does get you business, some business at the same time, not to where it should should do in the future. Um, aside from the geo farm as well, like I have expanded out into like Pickering in general. Um, and like I said, like like my strategy is an inch wide and a mile deep, like I'm going to kind of go 
you know, all over this area before I even decide to move out a little bit. So how is it that you're trying to pick up the game now that you've got a team? Um, I'm assuming, are they just buyer's agents or are they doing listings as well? At this point right now, they're buyer's agents. Um, I, I think I have a, a really specific way of how I want to operate this thing. And like for me to be kind of like uh, the team leader, I think there's like for me, I, I act like a coach. Uh, I'm going to work on scripting with them uh, and presentation skills at the same time. So right now, the way that it's working is, is that I'm having them train really well working on buyers. Uh, and I think that there will be a progression where we get into listings as well. Right now, the listings I can deal with, I can handle them. So, so most of the time I'm out there, I'm doing the listings uh, and they're really helping me with the buys. Okay, yeah. so let me talk about presentations and scripting for a second. Let's dive yeah. into that. When you first started and you, you started throwing out these flyers and then you started getting a response, did you yeah. have a presentation together? You were still with the other brokerage. Um, did yeah. you have something, a formal presentation or were you just sitting at the table and, and chatting? Yeah, uh, sitting at the table and chatting. And uh, I know it's 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 sometimes it's shocking to some of my colleagues when I talk about it, but I don't have a presentation, not even right now. Uh, I don't have one. Uh, I, I actually I sit there and I have a, a normal conversation uh, with the prospective client. Like I just, you know, I have a normal conversation. The most I really walk in there with is sold MLS listings and current on the market. I have them highlighted. I show them what the facts are. And I just have a normal conversation with them, ask them what their expectations are. What, what do they want out of this process? What are they looking for? That's really what I do with them. That's really interesting because a lot of people, as, as business progresses, I know that was the situation with myself, um, I've developed into now a system with a set presentation, especially when, you know, if you're looking to the future and you want to duplicate the process with a team yes. member, it's yes. easier to, to have that kind of system. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. See, uh, what I failed to mention was is that my business grew way quicker than I thought it was going to grow. Uh, and there's a lot of foundational stuff that I never really actually got into doing. So um, there's a lot of stuff last year and this year that I'm kind of backtracking and, and redoing them. So certain things that work for me, I'm not saying I have the best personality, but certain things that work for me because of the, my personality, the way that I come across, I got away with some of the stuff, not doing some of the stuff like the listing presentation and stuff like that. But I know that when I have this team up and running and when I start having them go on listing presentations, they're going to need this for sure. So, yeah, part of me is that I have to backtrack a little bit. So last year and this year is my kind of catch up from all okay, of this. So let's talk about that for a second. Yeah. And what sort of systems are you trying to implement other than uh, having a set presentation? Yeah. So, so also like one of my biggest things is, is within my office. So right now, like the way that my listing process works is that I know what I'm going to do. Like it's all in my head. So like, I know when I have a signed contract, this is what needs to happen. Like the sign needs to go, the lockbox needs to go, the feature sheets needs to come. Like it needs to, all these things need to happen. But right now it's not documented. It's, it's, it's nowhere. There's no process. There's no system really. It's just in my head. And I'm saying, okay, these needs to be done. So this is one of the major things that we started working on last year. And it's almost there to a point of like, I, I want it to be documented in a way. And that's what I told my assistant. I want it documented in a way that, you know, someone can walk into this desk and just open up this manual and know what to do. So that's, that's what we're kind of getting to right now. All right. So that's what you're putting in place right now. So yeah. that you have that solid base to build from in the exactly okay excellent now you've talked about branding yeah and geo farming i know you doing a lot of video as well when did that start uh video for me i think the first one uh really when i first got uh, interested in it was somewhere around 2000 and uh, 16, middle of 2016. Um, I, I try to keep up uh, with what's going on in terms of marketing trends and stuff like that. And uh, I realized that, you know, uh, social media is a big thing. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, I never really was buying into it before that. Uh, and then as I start investigating it further, I realized that the pictures and things like that, uh, the taxes start it's not going to work as well. It's not really going to grab people's attention. And really the next thing that people were talking about was really going with video. Um, so that's where I really started. I, I think we had a smaller presence with video starting around, you know, June, 2016. Uh, and now we've like, uh, especially last year, like we've really tried to ramp up the efforts on that. And I think you're going to see it like almost double or triple the effort of video for me that uh, this year. 
So let's talk about your video strategy. Do you have sure. something specific in mind? When you first started, what were you doing? Just uh, the listing videos? Or, yes. Or, okay. Yeah. So it started with the listing videos um, and it was getting me reach. Like on our back end of our business pages, we can see what the reach looks like and whatever. And I can easily compare it to where I was posting pictures versus video. And you could start to really get the buy-in from that. You could see that you have a bigger reach with the video, obviously. And then what it became was, is that um, like, then it's like, okay, well, this is starting to get stale and everybody's kind of doing it. So you want to, I want to try to be the market leader, right? Or to a certain point. So, so then it, we start mixing up with like content, like may, maybe making the listing videos a little bit more engaging uh, and doing that, like, kind of like upping our game on the listing videos and at the same time now trying to come up with more content to publish. Um, the content part of it really started last year. Um, I, and I think this year is the year that I'm going to actually have way more content coming up. I'm actually going to split it up almost in like two, two sections. My go forward is going to be two sections. One section is going to come across like professional, like this is what we do. This is our business. And I think the other side of it is going to be, it's going to be kind of like what, how we're chatting right now. It's a lot more casual and it's real. Like you can really see what's going on and it's raw. There's no cuts, there's no edits, there's no nothing. This is the real deal. So I think part of the videos are going to go like that. So are you going to be basing your content on what, on real estate information or on community information or, or everything or what? Uh, I, th I think there's going to be a mixture of everything. Um, one of the things that's my kind of goal is, is that I really want to make it so that we're helping people around us. Like I'm big into like seeing if there's anyone out there that needs help, that we can help improve their lives of, we can add some value to it. So I think that's going to be one of my things for sure is like, um, you know, how we like if I could do short videos about maybe like goal setting or, you know, uh, different things about like financially planning and, and things like that, like maybe how to buy your first home, like things that are really relatable. Like I know like we could do these like real estate overviews, like the market is up this, that. I, it's a lot of people doing that stuff right now too. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. I think the information is important and needs to be put out there. So that is going to be part of the content, but I think I'm going to try to move more towards like saying, Hey, like I'm actually out there and I want to see people succeed. Okay, great. Now in terms of a, a release strategy, are you looking for one a week, one a day, one a month? What is it that you're looking at for output? Yeah, I think that it's going to end up to being a couple a week, um, depending on listing. So listings depend on obviously getting the business. Um, you know, I would say that you probably end up seeing a listing video from us every 10 days or, you know, every two weeks or something like that. But that's based on my projections, my business projections. Um, there's a buddy of mine that's a realtor out in Kleinberg. Uh, him and I are doing a joint podcast uh, already, and we're actually running it off of YouTube as well. So we have a video going out like that, like once a week. And for me personally, I'm going to start doing one every, like release one every Sunday. So it, like basically you could probably see between two and three videos from us weekly. Okay. Yeah. Now, talking back about uh, the listing videos, you started with that. Did you start with that just as a basic video walkthrough or were you always doing sort of the introduction ahead of time with breaks? And then you said you wanted to do it a little bit differently because everybody was doing it that way. Can you walk through uh, that a little bit? Yeah, for sure. Um, the company I, I use um, and I've been using from day one, they're, they're awesome. And they were the ones that are like, hey, why don't you do the intro? So from day one, like I actually went back a few weeks ago and looked at my first video and I'm comparing it back to what I do right now. It's crazy because the first video, I was like a stiff cardboard, <laughs> uh, but I did. I, I did do the intro thing. I did the end, uh, but it wasn't, it didn't feel authentic to me. Like right now, mine is kind of like more casual. If you've looked at my listening videos they are a little bit more casual, but it's for real. The other one was like a lot more stiff and like trying to be professional and it just wasn't a good vibe. But so they've evolved. I've always done the intro and the exit, but they've evolved through. So it was kind of like, and this is the bedroom. This is yeah. the master compared to just relaxing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it just like, you know, you get comfortable after a certain point of time, a uh, certain point in time. Right. Like right. even for me to come out and do these casual videos that I'm starting to do right now, it's really for me to break out of my comfort zone of doing it. Like it's, it's something that's to this point right now, still difficult to do. So I'm glad you invited me to do this. Number one. <laughs> and, 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 it, and, you know, this other thing that I'm doing uh, with my other buddy, it, it gets me out of my shell of doing it too, and more comfortable on, you know, actually doing this. So it's, it's, it's really breaking out of the shell to do it more raw format now. 
I think when you're doing any kind of video or podcast format for myself, it's always easier when you're bouncing off of another person rather than yeah. looking into a lens yeah. and you're just sort of talking into the abyss and you don't, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. don't know what's going to wind up on the cutting room floor or not. You're just sort of like blathering on rather than bouncing it back and forth. Yeah, so so I found that to be super useful. And the other thing, um, the camera crew that I use now, like for the listing videos, they really just tell me, like, look at the lens as if you're talking to somebody. So like, like I think like even when I look at my videos now, like it, I look like I'm actually talking to somebody in those videos versus just like kind of like you're looking at the whole scene in the background. You know what I mean? Like all these people there. Um, now you're actually just like I know I'm looking right at the camera at that point. Yeah, so it becomes yeah, it becomes a bit, bit easier, I guess. That's a bit of a trick, especially with yeah. these things. Like right now, I'm looking at you on the screen rather than at the camera. Now I'm looking yeah. at the camera, and it's yeah. a little bit, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not worried about perfection. <laughs> yeah, no. All right, so you were talking a little bit about goals, and it's the beginning of the year right now. Uh, it'll be released a little bit later on uh, in a month or two, but how is it that you go about setting your goals for the year? Yeah, Um so like, uh, again, like I have a, a buddy of mine, him and I align on a lot of our stuff. Like he's in the West end and I'm in the East end. So we do collaborate on a lot. There's a very cool thing that we've been doing for, uh, the second year now. So towards the end of December, we actually go up to blue mountain and we stay there for like two days and, uh, we have this room that we kind of have, and we kind of chart out our business. What happened last year? what was good, what was bad, and what are we planning on doing this year? So it is a collaborative process to a certain point. We both kind of go in um, already having an idea of what we want to do with our business. Then we have like a collab collaborative session. And then leaving that, like I think then we come up with our, like then I come up with my individual goals at the same time. So then I refine my business goals and my own personal goals at the same time. So this is kind of like a, a very small group mastermind idea where you're bringing, helping each other figure out your, your goals and how you're going to get there. Now, when you do it, do you think big process first in terms of transactions or GCI or, or what is it that yeah. you focus on? Yeah. So, so I, so I am a big picture guy and, and that's why I suck with a lot of the details. <laughs> like a, a lot of my details are not that great, even when it comes to paperwork and, and stuff like that. I mean, the contract's done right, but it's just a matter of me figuring out where I put what, like I, I I'm not the best at doing that. That's why I have full-time help. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I, I, I'm a big picture guy. So I look at the big picture where I want to go. I'm, I'm one, five, 10, 15 year planner, right? So then I, I want to kind of have a vision of where I'm going and then I kind of re-engineer it backwards and I'm saying, okay, so what do I need to do to be able to get there? So I break it out even into monthly bits, weekly bits. Uh, I'll break it out and say, hey, th these are the metrics that we need to meet in order to get to our bigger goal. Because if I focus on that big goal, it's it's sometimes it's it's discouraging right? Yeah. If you look at that big number, it can be very overwhelming. Yeah. All right. So what are you doing on a daily basis? Do you have a schedule that's fairly set in terms of these are the things I need to get done in a day, or this is what I'm doing uh, by time blocking? How do you manage that part of it? Yeah. So, so for me, and, and I wouldn't say that I'm a perfectionist at it. Uh, what I've really been trying to do even over the last year or so is really perfect my morning routine. Um, most times I'm up at 5:25 in the morning. Uh, I'm up, uh, now I've incorporated like meditation. So I, I do that. I do my workout. I get ready. I'm at the office. I like to be at the office 7:45, 8 o'clock. Um, at eight o'clock, I'd like to talk to my agents and see what's going on with them. If there's anything I can help them with, we are, we haven't got into like role playing and those type of things yet, but this is something that we are going to start to be doing. So this is the time where I can see if there's something I can help them with. I do a little bit of role playing. Uh, then I spend like a, some time with the assistant, get her on track and whatever else like that. And then from like nine to 11, uh, is really my time to really connect with my clients, my past clients. And I want to make those phone calls, make sure everything is going well. Everybody he's doing good and keep in touch with my clients make sure that there's no opportunities at the same time that we're missing out on um and then really from 11 to 12 i do follow up on all my leads uh and then i break for lunch and then if i have done that right for the most part my mindset is in a spot after lunch that i'm good like i'm going to continue on so it's not really a set schedule in my afternoon it's really nailing my morning if i nail my morning i'm good that makes sense. Get it out of the way. Don't get distracted and, and yeah. get that done. Now, when did that start, that whole morning process? I would say about a year, a year and a bit ago. And it's been hard to actually comply with my own schedule because uh, there's so many things that can happen, right? Like 
uh, yesterday. Like we ended up getting snow. So it's just like, okay, well, my girlfriend wakes me up and she's like, you got to clean my car. And then it's like, I'm thrown off of my schedule now. Do you know what I mean? But so you get thrown off. But for the most part, I've been working at it for about a year and more or less it's worked out for me. I would say it's worked out for me in the last like four or five months. So this is four or five months of me maybe hammering it down and failing, 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 and then eventually starting to see the success in it. Now, a lot of people feel awkward contacting their database. They don't know what they're going to talk about. Um, are they going to talk about business or not? How do you approach it? Yeah, so so it's just like kind of like my listing presentation. Everything is like kind of casual with me, right? Like uh, un unless I need to be serious. But for the most part, I just call and say hi. Uh, how's it going? Like how's everything? How's everything been? I just kind of really do just touch base. You know, there are some lead-in points that you can do, like say with Remax. Remax has discounted tickets to the home show. So sometimes in the first quarter, I'll call them and, you know, to my clients, I'll be like, hey, do you want to actually go to the home show? I can send you out some tickets. So so there are different lead uh, leeways that you could get into the conversation. But for the most part, like, you know, I try to be in contact with my clients. So it's very, like, it's almost expected that I'm going to call you at some point just to say hi. And so is there any... Uh, strategy to bring in real estate or it's just totally casual a conversation with your contact and that's it and if something comes up they know you're already in real estate so they'll bring it up yeah like th that's that's what I'm actually going for like um, you know I, I think when they think of me for the most part they're associating me with real estate what what is the idea the idea is to keep on top of mind right like they know I'm calling them they they know that I'm out there and I'm looking for business too at the same time. I don't really harp on it and say, hey, like, is, you know, do you know anybody? Uh, like, I don't think it's a, uh, it's wrong to ask or anything else like that. It's just not my personality to ask. Yeah, it, well, it can feel a little bit awkward, which is why it a is. lot of people avoid it altogether. Sure. So yeah. you're making the conversation and just making it about your relationship with them and they already know you're in real estate at this yeah. point. Maybe if you were new or just getting in the business, you might want to let everybody know sure. hey i'm in real estate <laughs> yeah absolutely uh the other thing also is is that sometimes when i see interesting things that sometimes my clients have indicated to me in in passing or whatever that you know eventually i'm going to be interested in, in an investment property well that's something I, I keep in the back of my mind i know so if i happen to speak to them and be like hey like there was an interesting property that came up like maybe you might be interested in it so just kind of keeping it a little bit more casual. Uh, I do pass things along like that. Uh, there was a condo project that was coming up in Pickering. So I, I call my clients and say, hey, like, look, I'm buying a unit, like maybe something that you want to do as well. Okay. Now, are you keeping all of your uh, database in a CRM or is it Trying just sort to. of floating around? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're floating around on nine Excel sheets right now. So um, we just subscribed uh, to a CRM. I've subscribed before to everything out there. Um, but I think that we found one that actually works. I, I actually went through, I worked through it and I think it's good and easy to use. So um, I have my assistant right now, like putting up everything we have all of our contacts in there and we're just really learning how the whole system works. But yeah, we, we, we got to get organized like that. <laughs> That's one of my foundational things I'm, I'm circling back to, right? Got you. Uh, myself included, for the first couple of years, I was scrambling just to get things happening, right? So you're running around doing all these things, and then you got to stop at some point and be like, okay, how do I deal with all of this? It just can't keep floating around in my head. That's one thing. And then, like, look, um, you know, you and I met at that team summit, right? So, so the thing is, everywhere we go, like, I'm sure you're attending more of these seminars and different things and acquiring different knowledge as well. But one of the top things they tell you is your database, right? Like, that's everyone will tell you to work your database, right? Um, so it's something that you just naturally, if you're gonna continue to grow your business, uh, I think that's, you gotta be focused on it. Like our 2019 mission is our database. Like everybody in my office knows that's our mission. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's great. And, and that's a big part of my plan this year as well. So how is it that you're hitting them other than uh, a phone call and how often are you planning on calling them? Uh, once a quarter, so every three months. Um, once a quarter, every three months, uh, we also do, uh, a monthly newsletter as well that gets mailed out to their house. So that's another way. Um, we do a client barbecue. I think this is going to be the sixth or sixth year. I think we're going to be end up doing it. I used to do them in my backyard, but they got too big. So for the last two years, we've done them at parks. Uh, so this year, again, we're going to do it at a park. So I invite all my clients, uh, their kids and everything. We plan out activities. We, 
simple food. There's nothing gourmet there. There's hamburgers, hot dogs, chicken, maybe uh, basic stuff. But we but we have fun. Like we have water fight. We'll play tug of war. We'll do different things, and it's fun. So that's another way that I get everybody involved and engaged. So how do you budget for something like that? Um, do you have something in mind, or are you just like, oh, let's just throw this together? Uh, it, it was like that before. Uh, it was like that before. But I think over the last, like, say the last two times I've done it, because now I've actually had to go outside of my house uh, to do these uh, these events. So it was a lot more planned out. Um, so so like now, even say for this year, we're, like we're getting better at doing it, too. Uh, last year, we kind of like I don't want to say threw it together, but it wasn't planned out as well as I would like. It was it was a good event, but it wasn't as planned out as I would like. I learned a lot from that. And guess what? We're starting that process now, like six months in advance. And from the last couple of times, I have an idea of what it cost me. So uh, when we were doing our budgeting, I've, I've, I've allocated the funds for it now. Now, in terms of a marketing budget, I'm assuming you have a yearly budget because you have those expenses that you're carrying for branding, you know, on bus yeah. stops and benches and all that. Um, what percentage of your budget goes where? It's, it's, to be honest, it's a hard number to answer right now because the business grew so quickly. Like it was hard for me to keep track of a lot of the things. It was just like, okay, I need to throw money here. I need to throw money here. I need to throw money here. I would say last year was the first year that we probably got better at it. And I still don't have like all of my numbers back, but at a high level, I could tell you something. I could tell you that it's probably to operate my business. Um, it probably cost me 50% to operate my entire business. And of that 50%, you're splitting that up into your branding play, uh, yeah. your geo farm, um, the videos, which yeah. cost money as well. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else that I'm missing? Yeah. So, so basically I have, uh, my own office, like, so I don't work out of the brokerage. I have my own office. Um, so there's expenses associated with that. I have a small commercial truck. Um, there's a whole different thing we got involved with before in staging and stuff like that, which we just decided to exit at the end of 2017. So we have some stuff left over from that, but, uh, you know, we do a lot of open houses, so I, I still utilize that truck. So yeah, like, uh, all of that stuff is around like that 50%, it could be as high as like 55%, uh, like what your income is in, in order to run the business. Right. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about open house and open house strategies. Yeah. Tell it to me. What, what, what is your plan for an open house? You've got a listing, then what? Yep. So basically, um, like I, I like to have, like if we're going to do staging or setup or anything else like that, I love to get that stuff done on Monday mornings. Uh, Monday, my schedule would be between like 10 and 12. Like I want the house set up until like one o'clock or whatever. But at one o'clock, this place has got to be ready to go. Uh, and then we have our photographer and videographer come in and do their thing at that time. Uh, and I like to launch on Tuesdays. Uh, so I launched the listing on MLS on Tuesdays because I've got all my media back on Monday night. So we launch the listings on Tuesdays uh, and then we run an open house uh, Saturday and Sunday uh, of that week. So why Tuesday specifically? Um, like I like it because, um, I feel like if I launch it on a Monday or something else like that, uh, I'm not going to get the traction because sometimes people are busy. Uh, and, and I kind of also take into consideration the stats of the realtors as well. Like the overall pool of realtors, how many of them are actually doing this as a full time? How many of them are actually attentive? I feel like on Mondays, everybody's a little bit busy and, and a lot of things going on. So I like to hit it on Tuesday where things have been a little bit. I feel like things have been a little bit more planned out on the Monday. So Tuesday, people are really starting to look. Um, and then with uh, Realtor.ca, we had that huge leg time, which I think now has been corrected and it's a lot shorter now someone told me I haven't checked myself yet but um, that was my other thing is I want to launch it on Tuesday because that listing usually wouldn't have showed up until like Tuesday late night or Wednesday so then I want it to be exposed in the market as fast as possible to drive as much footstep as I can into the open house so what are you doing to get the traffic through the open house yeah so so obviously realtor.ca people that are looking around on there it's it's on realtor.ca the other thing that we're doing is through our social media as well we're running like uh, uh boost uh, boosted ads uh, for the uh promoting this the open house uh, and then the other thing that we do is like i'm big on signage so we have a lot of signage that goes up and up and around the area um the way that uh pickering works is that they're very much sticklers about your signage so you know, if you have an open house Saturday and Sunday in certain areas, I know people just leave their signs there all weekend. 
I can't do that. Um, I've got so many complaints from city of Pickering and to the point of we've had two meetings with them of how we're going to do this thing. Cause I told them I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to give up. So we got to work together on, on figuring this thing out. So, you know, I have a little bit of a leeway with them now that I can set up my signs a little bit earlier. They're like, they're okay with me taking them down a little bit later, but Saturday morning they go up Saturday night, they come down Sunday morning, they go up Sunday night, they come down. So it's a hustle. What a pain in the ass. I find <laughs> I find that that is such a pain for myself. I mean, I, I've been the one doing it. Do you have help getting this? Yeah, up? my brother. My brother comes out. I, I wake him up. and No, I don't wake him up. My brother's been a huge help to me, actually. Um, so he's there with me on Saturday morning. He comes in. And, and I like to get it over with early in the morning. So, like... Early in the morning, Saturday for me is like being here at 6.30 or 7 o'clock. And, you know, we'll, we'll have everything ready in the van and, and we'll hit it at that point. Um, but we go out that early and go do it. And then he joins me again in the evening time, 7, 8 o'clock at night when traffic dies down, right? That we can actually pick up the signs without uh, getting hit or something. So what kind of signs are you using? The ones that stick in the ground or the A-frames or the wooden ones? Yeah, so I have a combination. Uh, I, I have a bunch of signs uh, I've collected over time. Um, so most of the times there are the the A-frame signs that I'm using. Okay, and yeah. are, isn't it so wonderful when it's like slushy and muddy outside and you got to <laughs> trench through that back and forth? Yeah, it's great. So, so see, that's why like we have this van or whatever and I refuse to give it up. I know it's an expense or whatever else like that, but it makes our lives so much easier. We, we end up doing a bunch of open houses, so uh, we have a lot of signage. There could be times that we're putting out 40 or 50 signs. So I, I, I don't want them in my car. I don't want to hustle them through my car and getting my car all dirty with it. So the van works out great. Uh, our van is one of those that you can actually step into, and I can barely clear it, like my head, so I can stand in the back of this van. Oh, so wow. it's easier for us to like place the signs and, and deal with the process that we're doing right now. And how many signs do you put out per open house? We could put out, you know, 20, 20 signs. We could put out 20, 25 signs, depending on where it is, how many I think I can get away with without annoying people. <laughs> All right. And do you have a specific strategy as to where to place them? Uh, or are you just... High traffic areas. High traffic areas. It's a, it's a, like, let's be real. It's, it comes down to being a branding play at the same time, right? Of course. Yeah. And other than, um, so you've got the signs up, you've got the Facebook posts uh and realtor.ca so that's really your main those three are your main drivers the other thing that we're starting to do now is is that since that we've started to build this team like so they would go out and actually door knock it too so so the door knocking thing is happening a little bit more frequently now like even when we get the listings but even for the open houses like we'll go around beginning of the open house and just kind of door knock around the area and let people know that we are doing this open house so come on by if you're curious type of thing. Yeah, exactly. Like we know they're going to come through, mm -hmm. right? And I just rather not make it uncomfortable for them and they don't want to come through. Like I, I tell them like, hey, listen, half the people coming in are neighbors. I, I know that. So just come on through. It's all good. And once people enter the open house, talk to me about your strategy there. Yeah, my, my strategy is like, I'm not going to be in your face, like at all, at all, at all. When they come through the door, I'll give them like an eyesight kind of thing. Like, hey, how's it going? Come on in. I'll be at the back of the house. Like, I, I want them to take their time. I don't want to rush right up to the front door with them. Uh, I want them to feel comfortable and talk, chat amongst each other and whatever else like that. And when they come in, um, I don't even really start to talk about the house. I'll ask how they're doing and whatever else like that. My first thing is, is that, hey, are you familiar with the area? I don't, I don't even want to talk to you about the house right now. Are you familiar with the area? And if they say yes, it's great. And then maybe we'll have a chat about it. Oh, did you hear like, this is what's happening in this corner, this and that or whatever. Oh no, I didn't. So then you can, you can start a conversation. If they don't, it's a lot easier to start that conversation. Well, this is this, this is this, this is this. And I'll tell them, Hey, okay, just take your time. Look around. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, and then, so, so from the main floor at that point, I won't say anything. Either they go upstairs or downstairs, right? That's your options. So once they come back from one of the floors, I say, Hey, is there any questions? You guys are good. All right, yeah, continue on or whatever else like that. So I'm, I'm really kind of like hands off. I don't have a sign in sheet. I, I don't ask you for your information. Some people actually come up to me and ask me like, Hey, like you don't have a sign in sheet. I was like, yeah, but I get a lot of Joe's that numbers don't connect and, you know, so it's just like, hey, if you if you want to leave your contact information, if you want me to contact you, I definitely will. I'd like to do that, but it's got to be something that you want to leave with me. Okay, interesting. And what kind of return are you seeing on your open house strategy? 
So, so for me, it's, it's been really good only because, um, we're not pushy with it, right? Like we're not like their data hounding and, and stuff like that. Cause this is what happens. Like when they go through all of the open, not, I'm not saying all of them, but like a majority of the time, like people are asking, well, fill this out, fill this out. And then, you know, the people that have been through a couple of open houses, they're getting constantly called by these people and they get annoyed. So when they see me and I'm just like a kind of a, almost a hands-off approach to them, it's a little bit more refreshing to them. Uh, so, so for us, it's it's easy. Like, and what ends up happening is, is that we do get people that fill out our open house registration ones. I just use the ones um, from uh, uh, Oria. I just use those ones, open house registration forms. Um, and people fill them out and they get the right information and they're actually interested people. I'm not calling a list of 12 people whose numbers may or may not connect or just gave me their information because I asked for it. People that are giving me their information want me to contact them. So I'm, I'm getting better quality stuff out of it as well. Just to clarify for those listening out of Ontario, yeah. that's uh, the Ontario Real Estate Association, Oria. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. great. So you're just, you just have that casually put on a table and, and yeah. if they want to fill it out, great. Or if you have any questions for following up, great. But otherwise, that's it. Yeah, like uh, I, I really don't try to, we'll ask them questions, of course, right? Like it depends on the conversation. They're, like I try to gauge it based on what is happening, how they're reacting to what we're saying. So, uh, you know, if they're really like engaging with us and asking questions or something like that, I may say, hey, like, look, there is more information I can send you or I can contact you later at some point. Do you want to leave your information with me? So, so there are times that I will ask, it's not always going to be like, they're going to give me their information, but it depends on the conversation. If you like, I think at a certain point you get a vibe, like, are they just there to check out the place? Do they not want to really talk to you or whatever else like that? I won't really bother with that. Okay. Yeah. And so right now, um, we're talking about open houses as a, a way of getting business, um, your overall branding play and geo farming and we're working on sphere right yeah so those are the things we've touched on how would you break down percentage wise and it doesn't have to be exact but a general idea of how it's been maybe last year where did your business come from percentage wise i i would like i, I would say like 70 percent of my business came from people i already knew and referring me so for my database 70 70 percent of my business probably came from there I would say 20% of my business probably came from GeoFarm. GeoFarm has slowed down significantly because the neighborhood is starting to mature. And 10% is like overall, like maybe open house, sign calls, those type of things. Okay, great. Yeah. Now, in terms of following up with a lead, do you have a strategy in place for that? Yeah, so I do. So basically, like anyone that I feel is going to buy or sell in the next 10 days, uh, I will be a little bit more aggressive with them. Um, so they will hear from us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, yeah, they will. Uh, and then if, if, if it's going to be somebody that we know that is going to buy or sell in the next 90 days, we'll call them on Mondays. Okay, great. Now, have you gone into any uh, of the online lead strategies that everyone's talking about, whether it be through social or, or Google pay-per-click or any of that? Very briefly, uh, very briefly. Um, I played around with it a little bit off of Facebook to try to get leads off of that. But um, quite honestly, the infrastructure that we were talking about earlier is not in place to actually handle that right now. So I don't want to cause a lot of background noise and get away from what's more important to me and for me to be focused on. So uh, I think it is definitely something that I'm going to be doing. It's just not going to happen this year. Yeah, we'll stick with what's working, right? Yeah, and exactly. Don't take on too much. That's definitely a great takeaway lesson. Yeah, I think it could be it could be a great way of doing it, but I don't think it's for... For me, this is my belief, right? I don't think it's for somebody that's starting off or trying to structure. I think this is if you if you're if you're up and running and if you can handle it. Do you have an inside salesperson or do you have somebody that can filter through this? Like, uh, I, I'm I'm sure you could probably agree the quality of leads that you would get from there is not going to be uh, as great as going out and meeting somebody or getting somebody from your database, right? So, again, where do you want to keep your attention? Right. So yeah. let let's talk about. Summing this all up where if you have, you now have all this experience and knowledge and wisdom through what you've accomplished, let's say for some reason you get moved, you have to transfer, whatever, you get plopped down in a neighborhood that you just don't know, you're not familiar with the area, you don't really have any connections, how would you go about building your business from scratch, knowing what you know now? Yeah, knowing what I know now, I, I think more or less, I would kind of do it the same way. Um, uh, like, uh, I think that um, 
if I got if I got dropped into a new area, I would basically just try to figure out where I think that the turns are. So I would go into MLS and I would basically try to find out where the turns are happening, what pocket actually moves the most. Um, and I would start to actually concentrate my efforts onto marketing over there. I think I would still pull the same flyer play uh, and the way that I was doing social, I would do the same thing over there, but I would just make it more targeted to that area. Um, I think I would actually try to hone in on an area and get a, a really good um, a brand built or like at least name recognition in that neighborhood. People know who you are at that point uh, and then and then build out from there. And this is exactly what I've kind of done over here. And I think I would actually replicate the same thing. It would be obviously harder, um, but realistically, even with what I did over here, that was kind of the same thing. I moved from Young and Shepherd. I was not really in real estate at that time. I was kind of playing around with the part time when I moved to Pickering. It's kind of what I did. I really didn't know anyone. Um, of course, friends and family, but I'll be honest, I never really got a ton of business from my friends and family. I've got some, but compared to what the business volume is, most of it is people I don't know or I didn't know. Now, you talked about looking for a specific turn or turnover rate. What yeah. is there a number in mind that you really would look for? To be honest, like, no, but what I would do is I would actually go by the communities. If, if that exists in the area that I get dropped onto, I would go by the communities and I would basically just uh, run the sales of it and just say, hey, what has a higher turnover rate? Uh, and, and I would just go for that. Like, or, or if there is like certain area that you are considering working, I would try to break it down and say, hey, where are the turns in here? I, I would do the, the analytical part myself. Figure that out, figure out if it's a 5%, 6%, 8%, whatever it is, uh, turnover rate, and then just go for that. Now, would you look for a specific number of homes to hit? Yeah, um, I, I think so. I, I think your number count has to be up there, especially if, if you know the rates are less than 10%, right? Uh, so like in, in 100 houses, 10 of them are going to sell. Like, What's the likelihood of you being a new guy dropped into the neighborhood being able to get you know a, a good share of that? So I, I would say that... For me, the number that comes to mind is like a thousand. I, I would actually want to be around a thousand homes. So about a thousand homes at, uh, I don't know. I mean, these turnover rates these days are definitely different from what they were in this sure. market. Um, maybe f anywhere from five, to 10 would be very high. Yeah. But uh, five, 6% is what I'm kind of seeing all over the place. Yeah. And, and, and I think it has to be manageable to a certain point too, right? Like, I mean, how are you going to know that area so well or whatever else? I, I think that also the strategy has to be is, is that not that you're just blindly going in there and starting to market in there. I think you got to understand the area to a certain point too, right? Like you, you want to be the knowledgeable source there. Like, see with my area, if somebody calls me, I can recite you the last sales. Like I'm so involved. Like I can tell you what they were right now. Like I don't have to go in the system and check. I'll tell you what they are. You're like the real estate rain man. <laughs> yeah, man. like, like, dude, it's, it's like people know me in that area so much that I was standing outside of an open house. It wasn't busy. Someone drove by and they're like, can I get your autograph? I was like, yeah, you can on a listing agreement. <laughs> That's great. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Hey, we're, we're getting close to uh, wrapping up right now. Any parting words of wisdom for those that are just getting into the business or maybe those that have been in the business but are struggling to get it off the ground? Yeah, I, I would just say like, you know, do it for the real reason. Um, I, like, I'll just leave it with this. I, like, I see a lot of noise in the system right now. A um, lot of people are trying to play up more than what it is, like people starting up teams, people starting to do different things that really is going to take your attention away from what your main goal is. Your main goal is, is that you want to run a business, you want to generate income. I would say stay focused on the tasks that are going to get you there. Uh, it is not an easy thing. It's not HETV. It's not million dollar listing. It's not what you actually think it is. The grind is a lot harder than I thought what it was going to be. And, and I think that if you want it bad enough, you just got to find different avenues. Um, you know, there are things that may work, may not work. And I think you got to be very quick to move on and just say, okay, it didn't work or it worked or we got to give it enough time, uh, but just keep going at it. I would say Th there's a lot of things that I've implemented that didn't work, but there's a couple of things that I've done that worked really well. So I, I would say stick at it and don't do it for a fake reason. I I'd say do it for real, like stick to what's actually going to be uh, revenue generating. Excellent. Yeah. Well, we'll leave it at that. Thank you for Perfect. taking the time and talking nope. and sharing with, uh, with all of us, all of your strategies. And it's been excellent. So 
I look forward to seeing you again at maybe another event, or maybe I'll get sure. an invitation to your barbecue. Just saying. Yeah, I like hey, food too, hey, you, you know. know. As long as you don't come in prospect there. <laughs> hey, you know, I'm pretty far out of your area. Yeah. I, don't, I, I don't play in someone else's backyard. <laughs> no worries, man. Hey, I really appreciate you uh, inviting me onto your podcast here. Thanks a lot. Take care. Thanks, Thanks everybody, too. for listening. Thank you.